Since we don't want to get caught, we plan ahead. Are we crazy or what? We plan ahead. Are we crazy or what? Hi, I'm Bill with Self Reliance School, and today I wanted to show you a new product we've had the opportunity to test the Helios Rocket Stove by Titan Ready USA. If you've never seen a rocket stove before, uh, there are a lot of designs, they're all very similar. Let me show you the basics of how they work. Essentially, a rocket stove is just a long tube. Fire burns down in this part, in the very bottom of the tube, the combustion chamber, and fuel is fed in through this horizontal area, which is called the fuel magazine. And the, just the very tips of the fuel burn and it only takes small amount of fuel, very small pieces. You can get by with twigs that are maybe a quarter to a half inch. You get a very, very hot heat and nice large cooking surface here on the top. The stove itself is made out of a heavy duty iron pipe. Everything is welded together. Now it is pretty hefty, it weighs about 30 pounds, so it's not something you're gonna take backpacking with you, but for camping, uh, scenario, an off-grid situation, be great for cooking on a Dutch oven, uh, cooking on a grill, anything like that. You've got adjustable legs, so you can adjust it to about three different heights, set it on a table, lower it down, cook like that, you can set it on the ground and still not have to stoop over to cook. So let's get started, I'll start a fire and show you how this works. You start a fire in a rocket stove just like you would any other campfire. You use a little bit of tinder, some kindling, and then the fuel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple pieces of newspaper, wad them up, and just stick them inside here in the combustion chamber. This is what will initially catch on fire. Then I'm going to take a few pieces of my kindling, just some small pieces of really dry wood. These I'm just going to drop in through the top. And finally I'll take a couple pieces of actual fuel and insert them into the fuel magazine. As you can see, the fuel sticks out a little bit, that's okay. As it burns, you're gonna go ahead and push it in, because only the tips of it are going to burn. Okay, so we're ready to light. And my newspaper's lit, so let's just give it a few minutes and see what happens. Okay, so within just a few minutes, we've got a nice roaring fire going. What's happening is the airflow is being pulled in through the fuel magazine and up through the chimney. So as the wood burns, you just push it in to keep the tips of it burning. Now because the air is being sucked in, you've got a lot more efficiency to the fire. All of the heat is going up to your cooking surface and it's not really radiating out. I can put my hand here, feel a little bit of heat. I probably wouldn't want to touch the metal, but there's no problem being able to just push the wood in. So we're going to let that flame up a little bit and then I'm going to show you the actual cooking surface. I've stoked the fire a little bit higher than I normally would if I was going to cook on the surface. Um, I wouldn't really want the flames going up quite that high if I had a pan or a Dutch oven up there. I just wanted to show you, they had this neat little thing, they carved the name Helios into the top of the pipe so that when you've got some really good flames going you can see it. it makes a really cool effect at night. As you can see I've let the flames die down a little bit to what would be a manageable cooking height. I'm going to go ahead and put my Dutch oven up on top of it. This is about my heaviest Dutch oven I've got fits nicely on top of the Helios, doesn't sag, doesn't bend the legs. Now, if you notice, we've got these three rings up on top of the main uh, chimney. 
The reason for that is so that we can still get some airflow up underneath because if you obviously if you just put the Dutch oven straight on top of the chimney here, it would suffocate the fire. And again, if you notice, I'm holding my hand right here. It feels a little bit warm. I wouldn't want to hold it against it, but I'm not getting a lot of heat off of that. Most of the heat is going straight up into your cooking surface. Supposedly a rocket stove, really just about any type of rocket stove, whether it's the Helios or one that you make, is about 40 to 50 percent more efficient than just cooking over a campfire because again all of your heat is going up vertically and not radiating outwards. After your fire's been going a little while you're going to build up a lot of ash down in the bottom of the combustion chamber. Uh, that's going to choke out the rest of your fire so you need a way to remove it. Helios has a built-in trap door down here on the bottom. There's a little handle on the back that you can move and drop the trap door. The hot ash will come pouring out. And if you do that, you want to make sure that whatever's below the stove is not flammable. And you also want to make sure that you have some horizontal pieces in your combustion chamber that are still on fire. Because if you drop everything out, you're going to lose your entire fire. Uh, this piece does get a little hot, so I'm using a pot holder. This piece down here is still pretty cool. I can touch it. So you just move the lever and drop it down and your ash will come spilling out. I'm not going to do it because of the wind. It's going to blow right in my face, but this gives you an idea of what would happen. So that should give you a basic idea of what you can do with the Helios rocket stove. Now it is a little bit more expensive than something you could build at home from a couple of tin cans, but it's a lot more heavy duty. This thing will last for years, if not decades and it'll allow you to cook just about anything you would ever want to on it. For more information, we'll link to a blog post with some more reviews and pictures. Uh, and check us out at selfrelianceschool.com. We'll see you next time.